Welcome everyone. I'm Marcy Newman, your host of both Heart Shift TV and the High Vibe Tribe podcast. And I'm really excited to be here today with Robin Landau. Robin, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me as always. It's a pleasure. So everyone, the reason that Robin and I want to um, have this discussion, particularly today, is because we know that we're in a very energetically um, powerful time. This time that we call the lion's gate. And of course, you know, you I'm certain have been feeling the energy leading up to it. Um, and if you've been following some of Robin's posts in the High Vibe Tribe, I'm sure that you've recognized right away the vibrational frequency of this information is really at a heightened level. And what we're being called for, obviously, is to be able to take in this information, take in and integrate a higher vibrational frequency of energy, because as Robin is going to tell us all about, um, is that we are, of course, in this ascension process. Now, as light workers, this time has very significant implications for us. Um, and that's also why I've invited Robin here. And Robin, without further ado, I am just going to ask you to jump in. We want to talk about, first of all, what is Lion's Gate? What is all of this hullabaloo about? Yeah, so um, I just want to preface say that I'm not an astrologer or a, um, an expert at any of this, but Lion's Gate has always been very meaningful for me and very powerful. And in my own research, I have understood why it is and why so many other people, whether consciously or unconsciously, um, will be affected by the energies of Lionsgate. So Lionsgate happens every year um, and it's and it's uh, it's called the 88 portal, right? The Lionsgate portal, because it happens in the eighth month of August and it peaks on the eighth day of the month. So that's where we get the eight, eight. Um, but lion's gate and, you know, understand that we, it's the lion is because this, our sun is in the um, constellation of Leo, which is represented by the lion. And um, we have to understand that the lion is this, is the sun of, of, of our sun. Um, and so that's how it gets interpreted as the, um, as the frequency of, of divine light, right? And so as our actual sun is, is feeding and lighting up our physical body, the, it's also related to the sun um, Sirius, which is the galactic sun, like the spiritual sun. And so that's what's feeding our actual, our light body. So it's, it's, Leo being in the that the the sign of Leo is in the sun, right? And that the um, constellation sun is is in Sirius. And Sirius okay. has been in history related to ancient Egypt when the rising of Sirius in summer in the month of August. Um, it it also understand that this whole lion's gate it either starts around. July 26, some say the 26, some say the 28th, but around the 26th and it goes, stays open until the 12th, but it's on the 8th that it peaks. And the rising of Sirius uh, in ancient Egypt times was related to the rising of the Nile and the flooding of the Nile, Nile which was, you know, fed us, which nurtured us, which mm. you know, fed the crops and everything. So, so even though, um, we're thinking of it now, it's going back in, in our history since the time of Egypt, which is very significant in this time of ascension. And we can get into that if we have time. Sure. So we have the Leo, right? We have the eight and eight mm -hmm. is, um, is also on its side, the infinity sign. And that is about manifesting, but it's manifestation in balance. So what we're having the opportunity to do with the alignments of the sun being in Leo, Sirius rising, as well as it all going through the Orient belt, um, 
is that we have this triangle, which is a portal for, for manifestation, but it's manifestation in balance. And what we're having the opportunity to do is to shed anything that tilts the scale that keeps takes us out of balance. So any, any relationships, job, um, anything, people, um, anything that takes us away from achieving what it was we said we were going to do, our soul contracts, um, is it's time to shed it now. And, and yes, it's about abundance, right? But abundance is not just financial abundance is, is, is peace and joy. And it's, it's, it's a creative energy. Sirius, um, is, is a creative energy as well. So it's just a portal. We have portals that open throughout the year, but this particular portal through July 26, through August 12th, peaking on the 8th, is such a significant portal for change. And that's why we're all feeling it. We're kind of an end. We're also, it also, the eighth also coincides with the new moon. So we have that as another layer, another addition to everything that's going on here. So Lion's Gate is, is a biggie. It's a biggie for transformation. We're in a, we're in a transformation process, right? Where deconstruction is, you know, it, it, things look terrible. It might feel terrible. There's a separation still um, that's going on. And light workers in particular are, um, many anyway, are are following a false light. We're getting confused. We're getting taken out of balance. Um, and it's really now is the time. We're at a very uh, crucial point in the ascension where we need to make our choices. So, so interesting, all of this. And I, <clears throat> I have to thank you for really outlining it in a very simple way so we can understand. And yet we're getting a real deep like view of how the complexities, right, of all of these systems are integrated in our universe, but also within us and how our systems have been created to respond, to, um, to enact during these times. And something came into my mind, you know, when you first mentioned the 8-8, eight, eight, I actually saw two infinity signs in front of my eyes. And all of a sudden, I was struck with this, um, this thought that one of the reasons perhaps that this is such a powerful time for us, and it happens on a yearly basis, this is not a singular phenomenon, this happens on a yearly basis, is that the significance is, is that it is a time to bring us back into balance, but also it is a time to remind us that we are infinite beings and that we are here, right, with something that is of quite a great significance, being here at this time, but that that actually occurs every single year. And this coming back into remembering who we are and how important we are to the workings of everything that's happening. Um, and I would say particularly this year, um, but I don't even think it needs to be said. <laughs> so Yeah, it is particularly, we're getting much closer, you know, um, you know, as I don't know if, if all your viewers know, but this is our seventh and final attempt for ascension, right? We mm -hmm. failed six other times. And the reason why we failed so many times is because the light workers were not where they said they were going to be. We got distracted. Oh, um, wow. One of the major reasons is that we, uh, through our own empathy, um, didn't want to leave anything that we loved behind. Right. And we have to choose ourselves, right? Ascension is an individual path. 
Um, and it's not being selfish to, to choose yourself first. It's actually necessary when we're in balance, right? When we, when we balance out that ego mind, when we balance out all the archetypes in ourselves, when we um, can raise our vibration by clearing the density and static that have been accumulated on purpose, right? Sure. Like this, this density um, and this dumbing down was was purposeful for the experience in a 3d re reality but we have to remember that this is all just a hologram this is this is an, an illusion um we, we we are in form in 3d right 3d is the lowest dimension out of our 12 dimensions in this matrix this is our the lowest dimension where we can actually be in physical form the galactic um, core being the first dimension and the telluric realm being the second dimension. And so now as we're going higher into those bandwidths of four dimension, which there are seven bandwidths within that, many light workers are getting stuck in the lower quadrants of the fourth dimension, which is where heaven resides and where there's chaos and confusion. And as we're in this bifurcation, as we're in this split of whether we're choosing a technological um, ascension path or whether we're choosing an authentic, authentic God-realized ascension path, now is the time to make that choice because if we don't get into those upper um, thresholds of the fourth dimension, we are going to get swept under and get stuck. Yeah. within that and so now is the time to choose yourself to not get distracted by what's going on out there and many light workers are fighting a fight that doesn't really feel authentic to them or maybe fighting is not the right word but we're trying to win something that we already won in a sense and we just have to keep aligning ourselves with the successful timeline and let 3d play out the way that it was um, agreed upon in the higher realms and that's when you said that before so much there's so many moving parts to a planet rising for yeah. ascension right what is what does that even mean it means that earth and we through our human portal, through our chakra system, we are getting the opportunity along with earth to return back to source, we return back to the galactic core within this Milky Way galaxy so that we can get a reset. We get to do a reset. We get to stay in the soul carrier, right? The meat suit mm -hmm. with all our memories intact. This has never happened before within an ascension um, um, path. The, what's happened before when a, when a planet goes up for, for, for repair and, and returns back to source, there's an extinction that goes on. And so this is the first time ever. So that's why all eyes are on us. That's right. All eyes in the higher realms are on us because this has been never been accomplished before and we're doing it, but it's everyone has to choose it for themselves. And that's what we're experiencing. I, I love so much that you brought that up. Number one, about the choice. Number two, that we must make ourselves a priority. So I've been teaching self-love for a long time. And of course, initially, when I first started teaching it, I met with a lot of resistance, you know, people believing self-love, you know, was um, synonymous with selfish, right? And that it said all these horrific things about you if you were focusing on self-love. But what we are recognizing is indeed that it is part of our ascension necessity. We must understand that we as sovereign beings, we have the responsibility to the source energy of which we are a part of. And that, um, you know, you were talking about light workers getting stuck it's understandable, isn't it? I mean, it's understandable. We have all, you know, come into this world and been enculturated to believe that there are certain things that must take priorities in our lives. And those are beliefs that are not only being challenged, but we actually must do the work to let go of 
in order for us to facilitate our own, our own journey here. So um, Robin, can you talk a little bit more about you know, how light workers are stuck so often. And do you have any advice about getting a little more unstuck so that we can continue to rise? And um, particularly because as you said, all eyes are on us, okay? And we are at this, this point we've never achieved before. This is, we can do this. So let's talk about that. We can do this and we did do it. You know, so so what's happening is that we are integrating back with these memories, right? <clears throat> these higher aspects of ourselves that exist in all in all twelve dimensions, but we have to bypass the middlemen. We only can integrate with those aspects of ourselves that are in alignment with our choice. We being boots on the ground here in the third dimension, connecting to um, this reality. And only those aspects of ourselves that are in alignment with our choice of God realized ascension, if that's what you're choosing, everything else we need to send to the light with love. So that's the first step is to really recognize that all these other aspects of ourselves served us while we were in this reality of clearing 100% of our karma, which is really what the goal was in mastery, in spiritual um, maturity, right? And it's balancing not just the ego mind, which is what was helping create the lessons on the, in the, on the karma, karmic wheel, right? But also to heal and balance out all the archetypes, you know, everything that we already, we've done it all in all of our, my understanding is we've had six to 900 lifetimes as preparing for this ascension, and so we we've done it all. We've been it all. We've we've been the center. We've been the you know all the catalysts and 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 um, the saviors and and anything else in between. Dr. Loyich, Indian chiefs. We've all we've <laughs> been it all, and we and we just need to balance that out. And it's and it's through that balancing of the ego and the healing of the archetypes that light workers can really then we can step into our power. If we're if we're doing modalities with intention of of healing then that's an ego that's out of balance. The, the healing going forward in a, in a light body that's, that's um, harnessing these higher vibrations of 5D and above, healing isn't being done that way because we're moving out of fear and we're yes. more embodied in love frequency. And so healing has to be done by you choosing to do it, by you raising your vibration high enough so that we you can harness these higher frequencies clearing out the emotional and etheric body um healing that shadow side um but it's it's got to be you if someone is is pulling out density um with intention then you're bypassing your lessons and you'll just have to come back and do it again so what's going on here is we're preparing for our less next incarnation what do you, where do you want to, where do you want to be? Do you want to stay in this rinse and repeat cycle? Or do you want to experience true 5D um, Palladian love where we don't have to be in this place of duality and chaos? That's so my right. advice is that um, light workers need to step up and really start to take a, a um, you know, look in that mirror and see where are you coming from? Where is, where is your authenticity and, and, and integrity in, in your, um, in what you believe your role is in all of this, right? Absolutely. So <clears throat> thank you so much for that again, you know, so beautifully said. And so light workers just kind of, you know, bring it all home. What are we talking about? We're talking about number one, stepping into true self-love understanding what that is and what it asks of you. Number two, identifying the false beliefs that have been keeping you stuck, preventing you from fully expressing that God consciousness, that energy within you as a creator of this universe. Number three, I love that you brought up the archetypes because 
we all possess, right, these aspects of being that have to come into balance. We have got to recognize them and how they have played out in this lifetime, other lifetimes or whatever, but we have to acknowledge their existence. And the fact that I love that you jumped right in and you said, not only can we do this, we have done this. So let's join together, really start owning this and being that light that we have all come here, not only to be, but to recognize that it's at our feet also. Excellent. And I just want to add, if we, if we can imagine that we're the boat and mm -hmm. let our higher self, our Godhead self, right? The, our highest point that we can, that we can integrate with, let that aspect of ourselves be the sailor, be the captain that's, and then we just have to keep showing up as the best version of ourselves. And then we will, we will get there. We will succeed. Yeah. So beautiful. And I have a feeling, Robin, we're going to have to come back. We're going to have to talk about some other, you know, aspects of this. I'm looking at, you know, my clock as we're doing this. It's 111. Um, and, um, you know, you mentioned the Palladians. Um, you mentioned a number of other things that I believe, you know, we will be taking some deeper dives into. So I'm hoping that you'll come back. I would and, love to. I would yeah, love to. and let's continue our conversation. I've absolutely loved not only sharing this space and the energy with you, but also the depth of your knowledge and um, the expansiveness of who you are. So thank you so very much for that. Any parting words? Um. Greet the, the lion's gate with a raw. That's what I would say. Really embrace it. It's very powerful. Take advantage of this. You know, it's being amplified. This is the time of change and amplification, manifestation at its best, but it's manifestation and balance. Yes. So perfect. All right. Well, thank you everyone for being here and for giving us your precious time, your energy. Um, and of course, your open hearts and open minds. So until next time, again, I'm Marcy Newman, and please leave your comments, your questions below. Robin, how can people find you? Um, yeah, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, my, uh, my website is robinjoylando.com, and there's, you can message me there as well. So um, and you can, if you want more to learn more about Marconics, just uh, look at www.marconics.com and there's a wealth of information there as well. Amazing. All righty. Thank you so much, everyone. And we will see you soon.